I became president, <coughs> upon which I banned hunting. But by banning hunting, the whole country now wants <coughs> a game reserve making sure that we have got good protection regimes in place in our country to look after these animals. And it is so difficult because in Botswana, our game parks are not fenced. Animals are free roaming. So we used all the law enforcement agencies, dividing the country into areas of responsibility, which is a military term because I was in the military. So I used to occasionally forget when I was president that I was no longer military. <laughs> They do say presidents are commanders in chief, so I took full advantage of the, of the title um, to practice it. I would have weekly briefings from the minister and his people and the military and the police about the status of poaching in the country. And if there were any indications that we were losing ground or things were not going well, we would intervene. Know that we are guiding our wildlife with armed personnel. And we had, yes, a shoot-to-kill policy. Because tourism Botswana was really wildlife-based. Without wildlife, you have no tourism. Tourism became the second revenue earner after diamonds in Botswana, as a result of some of the actions that we took. We were in competition with countries around us who also had wildlife, Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa. But we wanted to stand up to do better. And in fact, that's what happened. Because we won a good number of international awards during the time that I was in office. It was also about the people, the communities in the areas around the wildlife. And they benefited because they were able to get more income because there were more income-generating activities for more people over more time of the year with more tourists as compared to when we had hunting concessions. Photographic concessions, I want to tell you from our experience, bring far more benefits than hunting because the photographic tourism took place over the year. It employed many more people. And that activity also had an effect on poachers, knowing that there were people moving around all the time, unlike with hunting. In the 10 years I was in office, we must have lost about two to three rhino in 10 years. So when the current man took over from me, the first thing he did was he lifted the ban on hunting, which demotivated the anti-poaching teams. And we saw a spike in poaching. What else did he do? You'll be amazed. He disarmed the anti-poaching unit of the Department of Wildlife. Now, why would you do that? When you know that poachers coming in who are armed, and in those teams, they used to have, in the uh, poaching teams, they would have poachers carrying AK-47s and hunting rifles. And the AK-47s were not to shoot elephants, because they can't kill an elephant with an AK-47. It was for their own protection against the military or the anti-poaching teams that they came across. So the anti-poaching teams were also armed. Now, we have lost about two-thirds of the rhinos that we introduced into the wilderness in the last three years. The latest Secretariat report from CITES would indicate that in 2018 there were 452 white rhino and 50 black rhino in Botswana in 2017. The last year I was in office. <laughs> Up until 2021, the number had gone from 452 down to 242. And those 242 and 27 black in 2021. Then in 2021, the government stopped 
giving out statistics because they were extremely sensitive about any information going out about how they were being um, accused of being incompetent and even complicit. And of course, I was at the forefront of that. So in 2021, we never got records. There was a cover-up. So politics, I can tell you, is about either the use of power to do good and to make changes for the better, or it is the abuse of power that it destroys. So we have options. You only have a choice between the two. Conservationists, environmentalists, scientists even, can only create the awareness. It is the politicians who usher in the policies and the programs and the laws to address these threats.